Let's talk some chess. This game was played in 2001. It's a bullet game, which means each player has one minute on the clock. That's obviously not very much time for a chess game. So we often get very exciting bullet matches when uh, the, the clock is quite low. The two players in this game are Roland Schmaltz with the white pieces and Ronan Harsvi with the black pieces. And Roland opens us up with e4. We have knight to c6 uh, with the black pieces. I'm going to put the sound up a little bit. That's better. Uh, knight to c3, um, and now uh, e5. So very standard stuff. Uh, the usual, very usual things we see in uh, openings. You get the pawns on the e-file out. You you put your knights on uh, c3 and c6, and, and all as well. Uh, now g3 by white, the first sort of you know not very standard move of the game. Um, pushing the pawn on g3, preparing to be in kettle the light squared bishop. Although it currently is blocked by uh, the pawn on e4. We have bishop to c5 by black, now sort of eyeing this uh, f2 pawn, and now fianchettoing the bishop on g2 as planned. Knight to f6, uh, now finally attacking this e4 pawn. It's defended twice by the knight and the bishop, but just adding some pressure here. And uh, knight g to e1, connecting these two knights, developing a, uh, another piece and preparing to castle kingside. We have d6, opening up a lane for the light squared bishop to develop, and now h3, preventing that bishop from coming to g4. Um, you know, you can imagine that putting the bishop on g4 would be a bit annoying. You're pinning the knight on e2 to the queen and sort of hampering this knight from moving up the board. So um, h3 in this position to prevent the bishop from coming to g4. Uh, and now uh, an interesting sort of Bobby Fischer-esque move, uh, retreating the bishop to b6. This dark squared bishop will hold sway over this entire game, and it will do so very safely from the confines of b6, where you can't really push a pawn uh, to kick it away, and, and the knight can't sort of get at it as easily. Um, well, I guess that the knight can't really attack. Well, ignore the knight part. I guess the you can't push it away with a pawn, um, and now this bishop will be a very important diagonal piece as we continue uh, with the game. So we have castles king side by white, castles king side by black, and you can already see maybe not the best decision to castle. You've already pushed these two pawns, so you have a bishop here, you have a knight here, and you still have these three pawns, but the, the pawn structure is not great, um, and it might be a little bit tricky to defend. Uh, and uh, it's a bullet game, so of course, you know, you're a lot of times you're not making the best moves, but um, you know, it's always good to castle. Well, it's not always good to castle, but it's good to castle, but in this situation, this doesn't look like a very safe fortress for the king. So, um, white here plays king to h2, improving the position of the king, getting the king closer to these pawns, um, and also getting it out of the pin of the dark squared bishop. Um, because this dark square bishop was pinning the pawn on f2 to the king on g1. And now we have rook to e8 by black, getting ready for some really nice rook lifts to e6, and the rook can move over and, and join the attack um, if such an attack materializes. Uh, here we have f4 by white, a really aggressive move. This is uh, allowed after the king moves to g2. Of course, in this position, you can't play f4 because, again, the bishop is pinning the pawn. So after king to, uh, to h2, um, now you play f4 and just really aggressive, which is fun. We see this often in bullet games. Um, you know, you're, you're threatening to open the position up, get your rook into the game, maybe even get the knight to f4, and just really expand and attack on the king side while trying to keep your king safe here um, with these two pawns and uh, bishop fortress. But here, uh, well, actually not yet. Uh, <laughs> Black doesn't ignore this threat yet. Uh, plays e captures on f4, and now pawn captures on f4, uh, which is a little bit surprising. You know, I think I would be looking more to capture with the rook or with the rook or the knight here. But we have pawn captures on f4, and this allows for uh, a wonderful attacking combination um, that where some mistakes are made, which we'll talk about, but. Um, just a very exciting sort of combination from here on out. So the first move in this combination is knight to g4 with check. And this looks like a knight sacrifice. Obviously, the knight is checking the king, but the pawn on h3 can take this knight. Um, but it's not a real sacrifice. If you take the knight with the pawn, then you get the immediate queen to h4 check. And this is a completely devastating check. The king has no squares to move to because don't forget about this bishop uh, tucked away on b6, cutting off the g1 square. The queen's taking these two squares away. So your only move is to block with the light squared bishop on h3. But now black enters the game with his light squared bishop on g4. Uh, and now this is just terrible. You can play rook to f3, protecting this bishop, bishop but now 
uh, bishop takes on f3, and now after queen to f1 protecting the bishop, uh, even bishop to f2, and this is just uh, an awful position to try to defend. You're already down material, and um, and yeah, this this is terrible. So the, the knight sacrifice on uh, g4 is not real, and of course uh, white sees that and just plays king to g3, which is the correct move in this position. And here's where things start to get a little bit crazy. The engine wants you to play knight to h6 here, uh, you know, the knight captured, well, the knight didn't capture a pawn, but it, it drew the king out of uh, hiding a bit, um, and now maybe you can find another way to sort of get the attack going um, and uh, get after this white king. But instead of retreating the knight to h6, here we have knight to f2, um, and this is a, this is a really uh, interesting move, obviously uh, sort of threatening all sorts of different yeah it's just, just a really interesting move uh you're you're putting the knight deeper in the position the the main threat of course is knight takes the queen on d1 um but it's also not good to have a knight that's uh, attacking this g4 and h3 square um but the most immediate threat is uh, uh, knight takes queen on d1 so white just captured with the rook on f2 um and now instead of again the engine here recommends that you just play bishop takes on f2 with check uh, king takes back, and now you've given up a bishop and a knight for a rook, which is not so good, but you do have this queen to h4 check, and after king to e3, you try to continue attacking normally and um, take advantage of this king that's on the third rank. Uh, but that's that's not uh, what happens. After rook takes, now we have the really, really aggressive, um, probably craziest move of the game, queen to h4 with check. And this is just a, a wild queen sacrifice. Um, it has to be accepted. The king, well, it doesn't have to be accepted, but uh, king to uh, f3 then meets with uh, queen to f2 uh, checkmate because the bishop is protecting the queen and the king has no squares to go to. This g4 square is uh, protected by the light square bishop. So uh, you have to accept the sacrifice if you don't want to be checkmated. Um, so king takes on h4. Um, and in this position, white is much better. This is a, a much better position for white. Um, you're up a ton of material, you're up a knight and a queen, uh, and, uh, you know, with perfect play, with perfect defense, you should be fine. This is a bullet game, though, so it's hard to find the best defense when you just have a minute on the clock, and your king, unfortunately, is on h4. So this is the whole idea behind sort of Black's plan here, is get the king uh, marched up the board on h4, where the king is super, super vulnerable, and try to uh, compensate for the material disadvantage um, to attack the king and eventually deliver checkmate. So here are the most obvious moves played, which is bishop to f2 with check. Obviously, now you have the bishop in behind the defenses, uh, delivering check uh, from the rear. Uh, you're essentially flanking the king here. And here white plays the, the best move, which is knight blocks on g3. So good defense so far from white. Uh, but now you get uh, kind of the idea that was alluded to earlier in the game after rook to e8. Uh, a wonderful rook lift to e6, preparing to swing the rook over and deliver check from above uh, on the white king. And here, um, white makes the first mistake, uh, plays king to g4. The proper move here is actually just, ooh, sorry, the proper move here is queen to h5, um, offering up the queen on, on h5. What do I mean by that? Here, black can just play rook to h6, pinning the king to the queen. Now we have queen takes, pawn takes. Um, uh, but this is actually totally fine. You just essentially relieve some pressure. There's no more, black has no more attack um, and you are uh, up material. So you are totally fine. Um, and uh, and this is winning for white. So that's what, that's what should have been played. It's just giving the queen away on h5, relieving some pressure and uh, going from there. Instead, we have king to g4. And now, uh, incredibly, even though the position was just way better for white, this is actually now a drawn position with proper play from both sides. So we'll, I'll see, you'll see what we, we mean by that. So here, knight to d4 is played, and this is a really uh, sort of quiet but uh, really important move. Uh, the knight blocks this f3 square because you've just sacrificed a ton of material to get the king to the fourth rank. You don't want the king running away and retreating to the king side and losing your advantage in your attack. So knight to d4 prevents the king from retreating, and now the king, for better or for worse, is stuck on the fourth rank and above. So here, here we have f5 by white, which is a fine move, uh, challenging this rook on e6 and taking away the g6 square, obviously quite important. Um, but now... Uh, uh, well, I said taking away the g6 square. It's not really taking away the g6 square because black here is able to play rook to g6 and you can't capture back because don't forget about this bishop on uh, c8 pinning the pawn to the king. So not really, it appears to defend the g6 square, but not really defending it. Um, and here the, the best move is just to play king to h5 
Um, and now the best that the best that you can play here with black pieces is just rook to h6, and here you just have a perpetual back and forth, um, and and that's the best move for for both players. Uh, that's not what white played. After this rook check to g6, um, here white really tries to go for it and uh, work on escaping with this king and plays f4. And that you know we can't really blame uh, Roland for playing this. You don't want to move your king to the fifth rank. You want to sort of keep it on the fourth rank. Looks like this should be fine. It's hard to see where the next move in the attack is, is coming. Um, but now the position is completely won for black. Uh, now the attack really is going to get some traction and, and uh, it'll be a devastating attack in the end. So see if you can find the proper move here with the black pieces while I give you a couple of seconds. Okay, um, so it might look like that move is bishop takes on g3 with check. The problem with this move is it allows king to e3, and now the king has basically escaped. It's attacking the knight, of course, but the king can run to e2 and, and run away, and, and now you've, you've won back a, a knight, but at the cost of uh, getting the king to safety, and that's not going to work. The correct move here is actually not a check, it's rook takes on g3, because this cuts off the third rank escape for the white king, and that is what's important. So, again, we, we see uh, over and over moves like knight d4, uh, rook takes on g3, preventing the king from escaping um, and uh, um, keeping the king in the fourth rank and above. So here we have... Uh, uh, queen to f1, uh, trying to get some counter attack this bishop, which is undefended on f2. Um, but this actually is completely losing now, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, here you want to play queen to g4. Again, the same idea, sacrificing the queen to relieve some pressure. We have rook takes, pawn takes, and now uh, this is actually, uh, the material is basically equal. There's the same amount of pieces on uh, both sides, but obviously uh, the black king is much safer. The white king is not very safe. These two pieces are very active. So this is a winning position for black, but it's the best defense for white. Um, it doesn't work to put the queen on f1 because now we have uh, sort of the final uh, the final drive, uh, driving the king up the board, uh, and it starts with g5 check. And this is a wonderful check. Uh, the king has zero squares to move to. All of these squares are taken away by black's pieces, um, including uh, e5 taken away by the pawn on d6. Uh, the pawn is obviously checking the king. It's protected by the rook, so your only move here, it might look like there's there's no move, but you, you do have a move to survive. It's f takes on g6 en passant. So the, the knight jumped, or sorry, the pawn jumped past the other pawn, and obviously by the rules of chess, you can take back en passant. Um, but now you've... Uh, uh, what's what's cool about this uh, this pawn push to g5 is you force this pawn away from f5. This pawn is currently guarding the e6 square. So after you play on passant, this e6 square is unguarded, and now you have knight to e6 with check. So a wonderful combination of uh, playing this pawn move to allow the knight to get to e6 and deliver check. And again, the king is totally hapless here. Basically no squares to go to except moving up the board. Uh, so here the king goes to f5, and again, moving up little by little, and you don't want your king on the fifth rank if you're playing with the white pieces, so this is, you know, this is not good. Um, but now it, it, you have no choice. Uh, knight to g7 with check. And again, um, I didn't even look at this line, but uh, f4 doesn't look very good. So the, the move that was played is, is f6. There might be a mate in one with king to f4, but I, I just... Didn't look at it. Is it actually? Is this checkmate? Yeah. If you go to f4, then knight to h5. This is checkmate. You're checking the king. The rook is taking off the third rank. Uh, the pawn and the bishop are taking away uh, f uh, e5 and f5, and the rook's taking away g5. So that's checkmate. You can't do that. You have to continue walking up the board. Uh, king to f6 is played. This is just a crazy king march. Uh, already the king is on the sixth rank on the 21st move, which is totally insane. Um, and now uh, rook takes on g6 with check. And again, the king just has to keep walking up the board. Very sad. Uh, king to e7 uh, on the seventh rank. And now, uh, well, not yet. Now we have uh, king to e6 check, forcing the king to the eighth rank. So now king to d8 on the 23rd move of the game, which is just absurd. The king started all the way over here on e1 and now has made its way, very sadly, um, all the way to uh, d8 where the black queen actually started the game. So uh, yeah, never never good when this happens, of course. Um, and here, uh, there actually are a couple of ways to continue. Um, the sort of the, the most straightforward way is playing bishop to h4, and this will lead to checkmate. 
the bishop is checking the king. The king has nowhere to go. All these squares are taken away. Oh, sorry, actually, the king does have somewhere to go. I didn't look at this line. Okay. That, that line works, but it's not as fun as the line I will show you. And the line I will show you here, which was played in the game, is bishop to b6. And this is a wonderful sacrifice. We saw the bishop dominating the game from the b6 square uh, for a big part of the game. So it's only fitting that the bishop returns to b6. And the purpose behind this move, another big theme of this game, is cutting off the king's escape on, b on c7. So the king, you know, the only square the king can move to right now in this position is capturing the pawn on c7 and then maybe, you know, getting away. Um, so when you put the bishop on b6, that eliminates any opportunity for the king to escape. And now white is completely out of moves. Um, here, white plays knight to d5, trying to come to the defense of the hapless king. But now the game uh, is ended with the very simple rook to e8. Uh, and this is checkmate. It's checkmate for many, many reasons. The rook is checking the king. The bishop is covering the d8 square. The knight is protecting the rook, the rook's taking away e7, the bishop's guarding c7, and this is uh, completely game over. Uh, so an awesome game, uh, one of the craziest king marches I've ever seen. The king started on, again, uh, e1 and ended up on d8, where it's checkmated very comfortably by the rook. Um, I also want to give props to this bishop, which was instrumental in this game, covered these very important squares on this diagonal and never moved once. So uh, who says, you know, you have to develop your pieces um, no, just kidding. You should develop your pieces. But uh, pretty impressive that it, it never moved and had such a, an influence on this game. And then I also want to give a shout out to this. Uh, I should give like game balls to different pieces. Uh, I think this bishop was amazing on b6, just controlling the this diagonal and, and really poetically retreating to b6 to finish the game. And then the second game ball would go to this bishop for influencing the game without moving, which is, which is very cool. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, drop a like, drop subscribe. Let me know of games you'd like to see me review, and we'll see you next time.